Short form bowls is really taking off around the country and as we head into winter it's a delight to be able to bring you some coverage of the short form bowls which is super singles this time and it's for year one to eight. This event is being played at the Nine Eye Bowling Club in the Hutt Valley and it has attracted uh, junior or year one to eight, so a little bit older than junior, uh, members from around the country in a series of playoff, various clubs and various centres, and we've got down to a situation where we're looking at finding the top four uh, to play off at this event. Uh, on the match you can see there, this is Sean Goldsbury, who's from the Takapuna Club, and he'll be playing with those red bowls, and you'll see that this will explain as we go, but this is a very tactical game. This is not your normal singles. Normal singles, you've got four bowls. Uh, in this, you have three bowls. His opponent is Lee Warburton here in the white and blue top. He's from uh, South Auckland, from the Homai Club. And both of these players have got exceptional records already. Warburton, his bowl coming in now. We might just uh, get a wee close-up of that bowl at some stage during this event because uh, it's an intriguing logo that he has on his bowl. In the background, some of the other competitors and also some of the supporters here for this. So singles with a difference, really. We're playing three bowl singles, six ends per set, and there are two sets, a tiebreaker of one end. Players can nominate kills. The jack is in the fixed position, same as uh, as bowls 3-5, it will remain in that circle. But they can move the mat around, so let's get into this first end of the first set between what is Lee the Warburton between the bowl on the mat and now the, oh, the jack and, the red bowl, and Sean Goldsbury. The marker down here is oh, Megan Gray. She's from the uh, Wairarapa or, um, Carterton Club of Carrington. Very popular club. Warburton already holding shot. Definitely one down with a measure for second and third. So Goldsbury comes down to have a look. I was talking to both these players before this match started and and uh, gosh, they're thinking this game through. It's a totally tactical game. It's a matter of getting one shot in there. Throughout the contest there haven't been many sort of multiple shots gained. It's grabbing one if you can basically. Just having a wee dig at the shot now. May get the jack here and does. And takes it out and gets a little bit of applause too from his opponent Lee Warburton. Now that touch of uh, his last ball went into the ditch. So it's might be in the count. So it was a very effective bowl there from Goldsbury. Yeah, two. Two Sean? Two Sean. Again, acknowledgement from Lee Warburton of a very good shot under pressure. Not sure how many it was, one or two. 
but we'll see as uh, the board is being activated by the Warburton. He'll flick it over and give us a good view there. And it was two shots, so a really effective shot from Sean Goldsbury first up. Remember, this is just uh, six ends per set. Goldsbury from Takapuna. His father Steve is here. Steve is the uh, centre president for Gisborne East Coast. Just finding their way. They haven't played on this rink today, but the rinks here at Nine Eye being indoors, they don't vary a great deal. You can see by the uh, sunlight coming through the window there and uh, being on the green, it's a bit of a distraction for them while they're playing, but at least it indicates that the weather outside is okay. Just looking for a correction here on his first and that's good enough to bring him almost within the circle how far past is that last ball from the jack please dreamline xg's those red balls of thank you sean goldsbury warburton he's just 19 years of age and he's been playing this is his sixth year of bowls one of the Many newer players who got introduced through their parents. It's a nice little turn in to possibly give him a shot. Megan Gray's just checking. She's, of course, allowed to say it's a measure. But it looks more like and a measure. Is. Favoring, but more like a measure. Want to have a look? So Goldsbury uh, has a pretty impressive uh, background in sport. He was a New Zealand volleyball player, um, played National League football as well. The man in the cap behind him on the table, that's his father. Goldsbury's a member of three different clubs. He's a... Uh, Senior representative uh, for Gisborne East Coast. Uh, he was born in that area. And some of you might recognise him too because he featured in the Bowls New Zealand coverage of the Mixed Peers Nationals uh, in Central Otago, the headquarters in Alexandra, earlier in the year when he and his partner finished third in that. So he's only a, a second year bowler, so pretty impressive record so far. Oh, this is a nice track. Is he going to pick that jack? Not quite. So remember, just three bowls. So the players themselves have said often they'd turn around and look for their fourth bowl and realise it was in the bag. So you haven't got that luxury of having a fourth bowl to correct things or secure extra shots or whatever your plan might be. So it's a quicker game. person who should be marking this game but is working busily on the scores is Fletcher Christian, Fletch from Takaro. Well that's a nice touch. One or maybe two out of that. That's a really good last bowl, third bowl from Lee Warburton. One. Are they going to level it up? <laughs> Sean Goldsbury's not giving it. 
If you want it, you measure it. So your Fletcher Christian has qualified in this group. So there are um, four groups of three. Uh, they're playing each other. And uh, that will determine which players get through to the last four. And we'll be showing you the plate final, the cup semi-final and cup final today. So plenty to look forward to. So the jack remains in that position, permanently placed on that spot, but you could see there Lee Warburton taking the mat out a bit further, making it a shorter end than they've had. Just a bit narrow with this first. Be happy with that weight. So it was only a single on the second, so it's Goldsbury leading by two to one after two ends. Goldsbury picking the green right. So Warburton is the uh, national under 21 singles champion. It was the runner up in the national secondary schools championship this year. And uh, was here earlier in the season, uh, part of the winning bowls 3-5 combination with Liam Paulson and Adam Bailey. So these guys, uh, even though the year 1-8, to eight, and this man's case just a second year bowler, have certainly made their mark early on in their careers. Again, Goldsbury taking it wide. He picked the green last time perfectly, not quite this time, but he's probably still holding shot down there. Change of hand here from Warburton. Walks up after it. Can see the gap there just outside his own. He can sit or sit on that red bowl of Goldsbury's to get the shot. He's certainly done that. So inside the shot, so he's holding certainly one. Down one to that. Yep. He played a stunner on the first end when he was uh, at least one down and he took the jack and killed the end, but it was respotted and he picked up a two. Not quite as good this time, so it looks like the scores will at least be level after this third end, or perhaps if uh, Warburton has got more than one. Warburton will go in front. I'll kick out one, and now it might be a long measure. He's claiming two, I think, and uh, now he's going to make sure of it with the tape. Did you play your par ball? No. 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 So two. So that's yeah. So that makes three. Yep. All right. Just watch behind Megan Gray and see what the score is. It's 3-2, so a couple there to Warburton on that third end. So halfway through now, so six ends is the situation.
beginning of the fourth end. 3-2, Warburton leads. Here he goes with these bowls, which are Aero Optimas, size 4.5. But the logo on it that he has is uh, in reference to his grandfather. It's got his grandfather Mike. His date of birth, you can see there, Mike and uh, 1945 to 2020 so uh, a birthday present for him and uh, it's really nice he's got uh, and, and the wee tick it looks like a wee tick just above the name of Mike there but it's actually a pipe and uh, Lee Warburton's grandfather there we go see the smoker's pipe just above the name Mike and um, that's because Mike was a pipe smoker that's nice to have a little memory of your granddad there when you're playing bowls. Yeah. Particularly when you're playing bowls as well as this. Is it going to break hold for a second? So three bowls, remember. That's all. So this is the last chance for Goldsbury to cut down this score on this end. He's got the option of knocking his own up or oh, he doesn't want to knock up his opponents but lucky there oh, it's not that's not that easy to detect who's got the shot here two totally. Totally. Four ends gone, playing the fifth. 5-2 Warburton of Homai. The Homai club against Sean Goldsbury of Takapuna. And two other clubs. Goldsbury struggled a bit going, playing the forehand in this direction last time. So he's changed to the backhand. A better result. His bowl has passed the jack, so there's no danger there for Warburton. He uses the backhand as well. Something for him to sit on there, of course, if he's got his weight right. Correction there. So he's holding two. As you can see, the little blue lollipop there next to Goldsbury's name shows that he's on the power play which doubles his points so this is a vital end and they have a power play on each on each set and he's going to nail three here oh no not quite or maybe let's see what they come up with that's an impressive use of the power play down by five to two but getting yeah. it looks like at least ooh, just one's gone, two's, two have gone. And Warburton saying, you want to claim three, you get down a measure. He is. 
crucial part of this particular set. Yeah, it's got that gap. Yeah, I thought it was foot on. Oh, two it is, so double your score from a two. And he's got uh, six, so Goldsbury from being 5-2 down now leads by 6-5. to five. She's pretty out of it sometimes, mate. You've got to pull her out and then... You've got to give it a shake <laughs> for it to get back in its... Uh... So last end of this round, do you want to play your power ball? Yes, please. Yes. Yep. <laughs> you can't waste them, can you? I think we'll make so with it being the last end, obviously, Warburton's using his power play. One for each set. A lot of thought going into it as Goldsbury stood there for a moment thinking about where am I going to put the mat. He's taken it back to the two metre. Staying on that hand away from the ditch. Both the players settling into pretty good line and length. It's interesting, Warburton's going to play the, the ditch hand as he sees that that bowl of uh, Goldsbury's might just be in his in a nuisance spot. He's playing this pretty well. Power play from Warburton and he needs to score a one to win this first set. We're looking at maybe the tightest head of the fire of this match. Yes, stop well. How far past is it from the jack? Thank you. Getting an indication from Megan Gray as to how far past the jack that shot bowl is. Good track, isn't it? Good track. Is he going to take it out? Yes, he does. So t removing the shot bowl has probably given him one. Although it's tight, there's three bowls in the count here. Or maybe all four. <laughs> I'm just looking at... Lee Warburton as he walks back. We're not far from where he's standing just to see if he gives anything away, but he doesn't. Last ball here on this first set for Sean Goldsbury. Is he going to get here? Is he going to get here? Well, it's st it'll still be in amongst that measure by the looks of things. They're all just outside the circle. Yeah, it was certainly worth a finger measure from Warburton. Look at that. Fr and from the mat... <laughs> 
Uh, that's not an easy shot. He's, he knows he's got his own to play up onto. But really, that one, that last one of uh, Goldsbury's is a nuisance for Warburton. He's been playing that hand, his backhand down the ditch hand side. Changing to the forehand. Just needs to turn his own over if he can, and that'd be a shot. If he turns over the red one, that'll be a shot to Goldsbury. Oh, is he going to come yeah. through that gap? If he does, that's a superb last bowl. Whoa, goodness me. And that red one's in danger of toppling over. I think they'll be measuring all round. Yes, they are. He just looked to have gone through that gap, didn't he? Which one are we looking at? So, Goldsbury says that uh, bowl it, as we look at it, 2 o'clock, is his closest. It beats that one. No, it is a uh, black and white bowl, I th think, has taken the shot out there, and... It is two, so the first set goes to Lee Warburton. He played his power play then, and uh, getting the double points gives him a seven to six first set lead, a win. Well, he almost played the perp. Well, as it turned out, he did, but he'd almost played the perfect bowl through that gap between his opponent's bowl and his. And if it had carried on unaffected, it would have sat very close to the jack. So good pressure last bowl from Lee Warburton of Homai in this uh, Super Singles Year 1-8 to eight competition, the finals, with uh, players from all around the nation competing in this. This really is a, a form of bowls that is going to, I think, impress a lot of club members from around the nation too. It's um, a quick form, good for winter as well, and the days aren't so long and it's a bit cooler. You're not out there as long as as if you were playing the full singles match, three, single, three bowl singles. Well, good stuff. So you can see there, Lee Warburton has won the first set against Sean Goldsbury. A tiebreaker if required, that's if uh, Goldsbury wins the second set, there's just one end. Situation, please. Two down. Two down. This ball on the right, is that high or low? Yours? That one? Yes, is that high or low? Uh, low. Low? Yep. Thank you. Oh, now, he's got the two back bowls. In fact, he's, yeah, so two back bowls, and great that, isn't it? Good sportsmanship, Goldsbury, low five to his opponent. That was a pretty good shot. Here it goes. He was down by two, and he did enough to pick the jack up, flick it off the side red one, take it out of play. It'll be respotted. Now the pressure goes back on Goldsbury, who played a similar shot in the first set. In fact, the first end of the first set. 
Now just needing to add a metre and a half onto his previous bowls. He had the perfect line. Now it's gone a bit too far. That was your live bowl, eh? So two to Sean. Yes. Out comes the mat. Warburton grabs two on the first. So different, isn't it, to uh, the traditional singles match of first to 21 shots. There's no room for error at all. And if you're playing your up shots, you've got to be accurate. Goldsbury is the North Harbour and Bay of Plenty junior singles champion. He's playing a lot of bowls. As I said earlier, it was uh, very prominent in the mixed pairs, nationals and central Otago. It's interesting to find out about uh, what the players think of this concept and both of these players have said we thoroughly enjoy it we really like this it's fast keeps us on our toes you've got to make crucial decisions and the fact that you've only got the three bowls means uh, any lapse of concentration can um, can really kill you on this short form Well, there's an opportunity now, is there, for Goldsbury to claim this end. He's down, just the one shot down, and was just measuring to see whether he had second and third. So I mentioned uh, Goldsbury won both the North Harbour and Bay of Plenty Junior Singles Championship. Well, he played the Bay of Plenty final here on Friday night here in Michael State uh, just fitting it into your calendar really isn't it and uh, they said well we're both going to be there so let's play it so they played here Friday night at 9 night and uh, Goldsbury won that chance here for maybe maximum if he can just inside edge that black bowl the shot bowl oh, flick off that won't hurt him either that'll be enough to give him the ooh, who knows it's on its side unlucky bro huh? unlucky Yep, didn't quite make it. The opportunity was there. So a single to Warburton. He moves to 3-0 after two ends of the second set.
So in this group, there's uh, Fletcher, or Fletch Christian from Takaro, who will be playing uh, one of these players next up. So groups of three competing to reduce the field down to the top four, the final four. So they had six games yesterday to find the top 12, or the um, top and bottom sixes, and then another six games to find the top four. So we're getting close to sorting out who's going to play in the championship matches. So the driving force behind this competition, this Super Singles, years 1-8, to eight, has been um, Fletcher Christian from Takaro with great assistance from Bowls New Zealand, Brendan Walton, of course, and, and others around the uh, North Island um, who have, you know, uh, given up their, or allowed their clubs to be used as venues. So the prizes uh, are, are impressive too. The cup section, the title winner gets $1,200. And then second is $900. Third gets $600. And the fourth, $300. So some uh, good sponsorship involved in this as well. And uh, the plate section, the winner gets $400. Then $300, $200, and $100. So I had very good entries from... And there'll be more, I'm sure, once the popularity of this becomes evident to players and particularly when you see while well, this is a year one to eight we've got first year players who got through and qualified through to uh, yes. year eight players Apologies. Goldsbury coming down. I mentioned that he was uh, third in the mixed pairs. We're going to have, with any luck, um, Lisa White, who was a gold medalist with, with her partner in the, uh, the mixed pairs in Central Otago. She's going to be, well, I saw her last night and I threatened that she's going to be in the commentary box and she didn't say no, so hopefully she'll jump in here and give us some of her experience. She plays here at 9A a lot. Yep. In fact, I caught up with her at the uh, prize giving of the Paikakariki okay. Bowling Club in the Kapiti Centre. They've had a really Im impressive season, picking up um, several centre titles and uh, their bowl 3 5 combination getting through to, well, very f to the semi finals of the national championship. So it was a big night. Playing the fourth end of the second set. The first set won by Warburton. Who used his uh, power play on the last. Securing a single to give him. Take him from 5-6 down to 7-6 up. So double points. Goldsbury really looked impressive playing the other hand coming this way. And uh, that's a big decision for him to change, even though Warburton first bowl was possibly in his line, but he'd been playing that so much better than uh, this ditch hand. We'll see what he does with this next one. Mind you, his, his first one is 
a nuisance bowl as well. So in comes Warburton with the shot bowl now, holding two. Needs a correction on both white and green. And now is looking at his last bowl to save him here. Plenty of room for Goldsbury. But it's a pressure. It's his third bowl. It's his last bowl. He certainly corrected his weight. Is it too much of a correction? It is. And he might have cut out. He's cut out a couple, I would say. And possibly just one. So his last bowl has saved him. Play being used here by Goldsbury. Data for him too. Hiding the jack. How far short is that from the jack, please? Sean's bowl? Yes, please. Thank you. There we are. That's the distance that um, Megan Graith suggests it is between the gap between jack and shot. Double points for Goldsbury in this. Oh, nice track here from Warburton. Most of us would look at that and say, well, it's going to be hard for him to get another two inside that. But he's not far off it if he nudges his own. <laughs> right. Just the one. Or is it? It's touching the shot bowl, and it looks to be breaking that line, doesn't it? But it's hard to tell with the bowl that's on its side, whether the edge of that is also cutting the line. So what does Warburton play from here? Last ball. Down by one or possibly two. Double points for Goldsbury. Played the backhand last time. Looking at the forehand here with weight. Taken his own. Oh, he's taken them all. But everything's gone. I think they've all gone out of the rink. No, there's just one. Oh, one of Goldsbury's there. Way short. Well, did that. That <laughs> really was great collision from that uh, drive from Warburton. He was probably down two. And now he might be down two again. Just needs to keep it on the rink to get a second here. 
and double his score. <laughs> For Sean Mitchell's power play makes four. <laughs> so gets the two shots, doubles that to four, and Goldsbury now moves to six, six three eight up. There it goes. Couldn't have done it better. Just or he could have. He needed to take that other red one out. <laughs> Final end in the second set. So Warburton won the first with his power play on the last end to go to seven to six. He now needs to score a couple on this to take the second set by an identical score. Six, three. Six to Sean. If he can't, we'll go to a tiebreaker, one, one end tiebreaker. Lee's three, and he's on his back. Well, that's a delightful shot first up by Lee Warburton, a 19-year-old, his sixth season of play from the Homai Club. Goldsbury not going to make life easy for him. Is that one down? One down. One down. Okay, thank you. Really needs a dead draw here if he can to get in. If movement of the jack would be good for him with this ball. Oh, well, his last ball's going to be crucial. So Goldsbury will be thinking not so much of his shot, it's what he thinks that <laughs> Warburton will do with his last. Sorry, Warburton has the uh, back bowl, but that only gives him one shot if he was at all looking to be aggressive. Yep, what would you do in this situation, Sean? What would you be playing if you were Warburton with the last bowl? That's a pretty much how he's got to approach this. Our next match will be Fletcher Christian against Lee Warburton. There'll be a bit of a break. We'll, uh, we might have a tiebreaker here, of course. And we'll be showing you some highlights of this and of plenty of highlights. Right, Goldsbury, what's on your mind? Ooh, he's looking he's looking to sit that shot bowl of Warburton's out, is he? Ooh. 
Oh, that's a good shot, isn't it? <laughs> right. So now, big pressure on Lee Warburton. What does he do here? Well, clearly, if he could move, get through that little gap between those two red and cut the Jack Backer a few centimetres, that would give him the match. But that gap will look like nothing down the far end. What, two bowls, two and a half bowls width? The kill. Awkward angle. The kill. Does he ever go at it? Gonna nominate the kill. We haven't seen that today. He can nominate one kill per set. And if he does kill it, then the end will be replayed, not, not uh, setting the jack on the two metre. Here we go. Is this the last play of this match? He does kill it. Wow, that's a very good pressure shot from Lee Warburton. So they'll replay this end. And Goldsbury says, I'll take the mat down the other end. We'll play that same distance. So it's just been pointed out to me, Brenda Walton just said, well, was that the right play? I mean, it was a good play because it keeps the game going. But in fact, Warburton loses his power play now. He was using his power play in the last, but he doesn't use it. He loses the power play if he's nominating a kill. So if he had um, just put the, played that shot and... He would have kept whatever points he had. He did have the back bowl, but I can't recall how it ended out now. But but at least now, he hasn't got that advantage of the power play. He's three down, which means <laughs> he has to uh, get three shots on this last end. So that's been totally difficult in this concept. Three bowl singles. There have been very few threes thrown up throughout the whole competition. And Goldsbury wants to make sure with his first that he makes it impossible for his opponent to get three inside it. But he can get three inside that. He's got to count with this one. Oh, well, pressure on both these players. Goldsbury's got to get one that's pretty much uh, cuts Warburton out of the contest. He just needs to add a metre and a half to his first. That's the shot. Looking at the moment, looking at a tiebreaker, one end. Push his own up, but he'll need to go with it. So that's one shot there to Warburton. The gate's still open here. This is a, a very important bowl for Sean Goldsbury. Shut the gate. That's what he's trying to do. Close the door. Oh, has he got enough weight? I don't think he has. So Warburton has the opportunity with that red bowl out on the side. That's holding him out of three shots. So out on the side, I mean to the left as we look at it here. He's got... It looks like he's got second and third. I wonder if he has. Certainly got second. Is 
is this the last bowl of this game or just of this set and we move to a tiebreaker Warburton won the first 7-6 here we go inside edge off that red would be lovely for him to push that red out and for him to go in for another shot and he's not a mile away he's not a mile away he's going to just cruise past it and so we head into a tiebreaker <laughs> finger measures all round oh we're going to measure So measuring not so much for the win here, but for differential, because that will come into play when it's uh, sorting out who goes into the top four. So he's got one. Warburton's got one. He's got two. So, two so it is a two. They're looking to shake hands, but no, they go to a tiebreaker, don't they? So go into a tiebreak now. Yep. But shaking hands anyway. <laughs> so Warburton won the first 7 6. Goldsbury wins the second 6 5. And we're going into a tiebreak. One end tiebreaker. Do they toss for this? They do. Which end are they going to play it from? They both seem to prefer the other coming the that direction that they've just uh, travelled. Oh no, they're going to place the mat now. Warburton has it. He takes the mat out a fair distance. The jack remains spotted. And this is a tiebreaker to determine placings in the top four of this competition so there's uh, three players in each group these two Lee Warburton, Sean Goldsbury and Fletcher Christian and once this match is over we will see Christian for the first time playing against Warburton good starter Good response. Right, Follows it down. Gives it an opportunity to, to see whether he's actually got the shot or not. tactics Goldsbury um, apparently has the shot but it's very tight there
lot of time to think about this. He's been down, considered it, done a double measure to make sure. The way he sort of drooped his shoulders suggests that maybe he is one down. That was the indication, I think, given by Megan Gray, the marker. But the players like to make sure themselves. Here we go. His last bowl. Looks to be running on. Now Goldsbury's turn. Is he going to play his last? Is he going to trust his finger measure? <laughs> I don't think you would when, you, when it's that close. So I just wonder whether, in fact, Warburton th believes he's got the shot and by just playing up towards the two metre, he was just uh, covering or predicting what uh, Goldsbury might do. So he's certainly playing for the shot here. So looking to rest out that black bowl perhaps. This is his intention to make sure he's got the shot or not. Here we go. Last bowl. Certainly not going to be short. He's very wide. Is it going to come in from there? It's not. So I just wonder. We might have to have the umpire in on this one. Yes, they are. They're calling for an umpire. So it was a very tight measure to determine which of these two, Lee Warburton or Sean Goldsbury, wins this first match of this pool in the Super Singles Year 1-8. to eight. Umpire hasn't been used at all today so far. Kath Thompson, a very good player herself, is wandering down with hopefully the right equipment. Chocks go in. I'd struggle to put the chocks in without moving the bowls. <laughs> Shaking so much. Here we go. First measure. The red one belongs to Goldsbury of Takapuna. Second year player, but already a senior representative for Gisborne East Coast. That's where he was born. And the black and white one with the mic and the pipe on it. And the dates of his grandfather, 1945 to 2020, Lee Warburton. Sixth season, national under-21 singles champion. Oh, there can we see a bit of space. A bit of space there between the end of the marker and the bowl. Let's try it again. Yep, there it is. The red one gets it. And so this first match of this particular pool is won by Sean Goldsbury of Takapuna in a tiebreaker. And a close measure, the umpire called in for the first time in the game to determine who wins it. The winner is Sean Goldsbury. He lost the first 7-6. He won the second 6-5 and has now taken the tiebreaker. We'll be back soon with uh, Lee Warburton against Fletcher Christian. Some highlights of this match first, though.
Well, we're back here live at the Nine-Eye Bowling Club in the Hutt Valley where it's beautiful outside and pleasant inside and we're into the second of this group. The match between Fletcher Christian on the mat at the moment wearing the Takaro colours from the Manawatu and uh, Lee Warburton who is in the background and we've of course just seen Warburton beaten in a tie break by the third member of this pool, Sean Goldsbury. So Fletch Christian uh, really is the man behind this concept. He worked hard, he got involved with players, he rang clubs, he constantly on the phone badgering people <laughs> to get involved um, and he sees this concept come to fruition with the help of Bowls New Zealand of course and uh, and particularly in the early stages with uh, Brendan Walton from Paratutu, as he was. Very proud of that club, aren't you, Brendan? Yes, he's sitting here. Got his thumb up. I think it was his thumb. Yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> so this bowl coming down now is the one that we've seen in that first game. He'll be disappointed. Uh, Lee Warburton, on reflection, probably when uh, in the at the end of the second set, when he was trailing by um, six to three, he nominated a kill, which of course, if successful, meant that the end was replayed, but he lost his power play. And as it turned out, if he had just killed the end, the jack would have been respotted on the two, and he probably, with the toucher and the ditch, would have picked up a two, playing the power play, he would have got four and would have won that match but there's so much to cons consider when you're standing there on the mat and uh, under a bit of pressure so oh, he dropped the game lost uh, lost yeah. the power uh, the tiebreaker to the man who's now oh, marking Sean Goldsbury so Fletcher Christian standing in the background uh, right throughout that first game uh, while Fletch was down to market he was working on uh, the scoreboard um, he's running everything involved with this so he's doing a lot of work and he might even get two shots out of this or well, not quite but he could still get a couple as he steps up to play on the the ditch side through the shafts of sunlight coming through Over the years, um, and I'm not sure th what, how many years Fletch has been playing. It's not that many, maybe a third year bowler. I'm unsure. I'll check with him later. But he's been down <coughs> to the club that I belong to, the Ramati Bowling Club. Um, he's got family down in that area. And wherever there's a bowling club, Fletch turns up. So there we are. Nice opener for him. So two shots for Fletch Christian. Well, if you've just joined us for the Super Singles Finals Day, um, year one to eight players. Uh, Lee Warburton is from Homai in uh, South Auckland area. And uh, Fletch Christian from Takaro in Manawatu. It is singles, but it's three bowl singles. Singles with a difference. Short form bowls. They're playing pairs as well uh, at a later date. So lots of these competitions going on. And certainly the sort of competition that's going to attract... Uh, new players uh, who haven't got that much time so the games are over quite quickly so three bowl singles two sets of six ends a tiebreaker if required you have a power play each set you can nominate a kill which means that uh, the end will be replayed if you're successful the jack is always situated in the spot there that it is at the moment. And uh, if it is just a kill that's not nominated, the jack will be respotted right there. What a good opener on the second end by Warburton. No doubt bringing his weighted shot into play here. Well, this first, just to move that jack, uh, move the uh, shot out. Oops, sit on it. Uh, he's not happy with that. 
pushed it wide, turned his back on it. Looked to be sort of a two mines shot. Um, should I just draw onto that or will I play with a bit of bit more weight in, uh, than a draw? And ended up with a bit more weight but not much else going for it. So Fletcher Christian having picked up a two on the first now finds himself two down playing his last. Yeah, three wins out of five. So if I win the last one off, sort of can't. Oh, this is well pointed. Hold. Oh, gee. Good effort. Settles in for second shot, though. So that's certainly a more healthy situation than he was. Can you let me off? Yeah, sure did. Get out of jail free card. Thank you. So I think uh, Fletch Christian will be uh, quite relieved about that situation. It was looking ominous for him, but he drops just a single. He still leads. In the background there you can see, or to the side, you can see other, other matches in action, other groups of three players. We have uh, one para bowler there playing in a uh, wheelchair. And the colours of all sorts of clubs from around the North Island involved in this. Alongside us there we have Adam Butcher of Te Atatu playing Karen Pinn of Gisborne. Or a respelling coming. <laughs> Should have picked it up because I just looked across and saw it's Adam Blucher who we saw so much of uh, in the bowls 3-5 here. He played some magnificent bowls in those finals. A lot of these players have been here before at Nine Eye. Of course, Nine Eye is one of the uh, top uh, indoor facilities around the country and features regularly in national championships. We've got. Uh, Champion of Champions coming up soon the, um, in Hastings. We'll move to Hastings next weekend for the <coughs> National Champion of Champions singles. Um, Champion of Champion pairs are in Dunedin, I think, the following week or the week after that. So lots to watch here on your live streaming and YouTube through uh, Bowls New Zealand. Regarded as a summer sport, isn't it? And yet we play all the year round. This is fantastic with so many artificial surfaces uh, in play. Clubs can stay open right throughout the year. And uh, indoor facilities in particular, like this one here in Nainai. Absolutely stunning. So two all, we're playing the fourth end. As 
Doesn't matter if he hits his own, and it might even t help him out a bit more. Oh yes, that might, he might have settled him for three there. It's that back ball out uh, to the right, far right as we look at it. So this ball out here to the left is the one which is in the uh, in the road for Fletch Christian. Oh no, it's just a single. Gosh, it was, that was close. Really, from our view, it looked like he might have just done enough to score a three. Uh, when in fact he was, you know, should have got a two with that ball that he put down, but didn't. So he moves back into the lead at three to two. No power plays as yet. Straight from the Sharon Sims coaching group, I'd say. <laughs> Fletcher Christian, Sharon Sims, patron of New Zealand Bowls and uh, one of our most outstanding players, but also an excellent coach, particularly of um, newer players. She gives them a great grounding. The black lollipop indicates that Christian holds the shot. He's up by three to two, playing the fifth of six ends. Oh. Oh. Not holding shot now. That's a good little toucher which moved the jack slightly back towards Christian. So it's just one for Warburton. Foley. <laughs> Just looking at the no, Adam Blucher and uh, yep. Fletcher Christian having a conversation from different rinks as uh, <laughs> he gets ready to play this, his final shot. <laughs> like a weighted shot coming from Fletch. Not a last minute uh, changing of his grip, moving the ball around on his fingers quite a bit, that was interesting. So looking to get both of them, trying to get the outside edge possibly of that uh, second or closest um, Warburton bowl, play it onto the other and kill the end. 
The option really was to play just onto the shot bowl and the jack would have popped back slightly to his own. However, that was that's a touch shot if he was playing that, but certainly it was worth a go. So we see now that Warburton has a chance to make this a three if he can just beat that back bowl of uh, Christians. Here we go, playing that ditch hand. Looks to be a bit wide out there, certainly he is. And just settle for one, is it? Real double power play. Sweet, mate. Oh, it's your map. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Good. So they're both playing power plays now. The each have failed to use it in the uh, first five ends. They're fronting up now with the scores tied at three all. And power play. So <laughs> don't really need to use it. Whoever gets the shot has won, won it, but they're going to play it anyway. And, and as we've talked earlier, uh, points differential is important. Sean, how low is that, mate? Thanks, bro. Just was uh, quite a bit narrow with his first and short. Fletch Christian, three all, as you can see, both using power play, not wasting it. End six, so the final end. Well, both players are very scratchy in this one. This is a, a big one for them. When it gets an advantage going through to the second set. Last bowl. Somewhere in between your first two, Fletch. With a meter and a bit on. Here we go. You're certainly inside that last one. Your weight's better. If you nab the jack, you'll be very happy. And not able to, so the first set goes the way of Lee Warburton. A two on that end gives him four and a seven to three victory.
very quickly into play, starting the second set, using his backhand and the open side of the rinks. See, another game started on the uh, the rink next to them, rink uh, two here. So the match between Blucher and Pin has uh, ended. I think Blucher indicated that he won that. Very deliberate. Takes a long time on the mat. Goes through his normal routine. Does enough for two shots on this end. Well, the player of Warburton's class. There's a big tempting gap there for him to come inside. Come inside is closest bowl. Settle for the shot. does so gets a toucher as well twelve hundred dollars first prize for this for those that get through to the top four they'll be playing for that but uh, prize money going down to eight Eighth, there's a plate section for the second four. Come on, hurry. This is a bit of green, I think, from Fletch. Oh, was two, but too weighty. So one there to start the second set to Warburton. Is that Jack Level? So that information from Sean Goldsbury enabled Warburton to play with confidence on his forehand. knowing that uh, Christian's bowl was just past the jack 
only fractionally, but at least it was not going to do any damage. It's already the shot anyway. assume that was a tactic to cover the two meter mark which comes into play if the uh, end is killed right, right. it's going to be wide out there too so now the chance for yeah. Christian to get a second shot here and take the lead on the second end Warburton walks in, picks the mat up, and they start marching down. Oh, I don't think he's going to be happy with this. That's a really good opportunity for him to get a second shot there, but he'll settle for one. One black lollipop goes up. The scores are tied, one all. After the second end of set two, this match between Warburton and Christian. Warburton from the Homai Club and Christian from Takaro. decided to go for the mat right back to the two meter looks like front edge of the mat on the two meter mark too He's been watching me. So Warburton didn't look too happy with his first effort either. They're both not in the zone. His weight was better, but so one had a good green and one had a good weight. Correction required. Going to be up this time. Short again. Mate. Shorter. Good wait, mate. So Warburton makes the green adjustment. Oh, this is a scratchy end for these two. They've played some very tight ones. He might get this back, <laughs> might want it back. <laughs> I know he's added a good weight onto it. Yeah, under pressure that too, with two uh, bowls which ended up the same distance from the jack and quite short. He puts one within the inner circle and for the moment anyway holds the shot on this third end. Scores level at one all, Warburton winning the first set 7-3.
what is it? Uh, call a power to Fletch mate. Christian on the second, yeah. uh, third end, and he leads by two to one. Power. A lot of room to play on, and, and, and he would have been most disappointed if he hadn't nailed something there, but so too would Warburton with his three. So power play coming up early in the set. That's being played by the man on the match on the mat, Fletch Christian. Not going for that uh, two-meter mat this time. He's hauled it out quite a bit further. Sticking to this side of the rink. Played backhand going this the other way. Forehand this way. A better start. Notice the, the different styles of these two players, particularly their foot placement. See, Fletch Christian has is pretty much in an orthodox situation, pointing slightly to the direction that he's bowling. In this case, out to his right, to this forehand. Doesn't step far off the mat when he bowls. Get inside, yeah. oh, now we'll see the foot placement of uh, Warburton is completely different. And then walks off the mat straight afterwards, two or three paces. Sort of that, almost that Australian style where they follow through a long way most of the time that's a good bowl to not quite giving him two shots but in the zone so that uh, that's handy though for Christian he's got places to sit using his power play needs to make it count If he can sit that shot ball out, I think he's gone a bit wide here for that weight. The weight was probably okay, actually. Could have sat that shot ball out and got, picked up two shots, and now he sees his use of the power play not producing any result. Didn't want that jack to go too much over to the side. Takes one, probably two out of this. He does two. Thwarts Christian's use of the power play and picks up a couple himself to take the lead. Lee Warburton leading by three to two. Starts very quickly. He's on. He's onto the mat. Puts it down. Bowls up, and uh, Fletch Christian was still walking around, um, kicking his own bowls back into a position. So just trying to hurry the game along. I think that Christian's not being 
hurried at all. He just goes through his normal routine, places his left, uh, uses his left hand, just as that steadying guide for the delivery arm. Doesn't look happy with that, does he? <laughs> He's grimacing. Oh, you shouldn't be happy with that either. No, dreadful ball, Lee. Stepping way over to the right side of the mat. Oh, yeah. Just to help him get around it. Oh, under or around his own bowl. Or, as is the case, play directly onto it. So down two here. Kill, mate. Kill. Yeah. So he's nominated the kill. It's a good target for him too. Uh, his first, we saw him ha have a run shot earlier on. It wasn't very good, but he's got a great position here. There's three balls and a target there. Not a mile away. Not a mile away. <laughs> well, he didn't kill it. On the pitch. Trickles the jack back. Sits with it. Bye -bye, man. Yeah, want the kill. Gets the mat. Goes to three all. Playing the last end. Just got lucky, mate. Would have killed on any other shot. Yeah, exactly. Cheers, mate. Can see so it Warburton now. took the first at 7 3. He's now playing using his power play at 3 all. Fletch Christian to take this through to a tiebreaker needs to win this end. Just one shot. Put this one right on the jack. Fletch. And see what happens from there. Okay. Put your next one right on the jack and see what happens from there. You've got the two meter covered. That's good. Got another chance here, Fletch. Fletch Christian, the instigator of this, a man who's sort of running it and playing at the same time, and one of the most enthusiastic bowlers in the country. Here he goes. Move to the backhand. He knows it takes a bit more green out there. He's given it more green. Big again. I 
I think this is a tactic. What he's going to do next is just tickle the jack back to those two bowls and he'll get three. Or at least the shot. He's got the shot at the moment. Me Warburton Heart. comes round that bowl, Heart. his own bowl, and that's a much Heart. better effort from him. So he has this match in his hand. May as well, mate. Just go for it. You've got two back balls. Confidence from your last end where you took the jack right back. Saved yourself. Yep. Good plan. Here we go. Christian with the run. Looking to take out that shot bowl to kill the end. He's got the two back bowls. If he's successful with this, he's got... A tie break at a face. Here we go. Not bad, not bad. Just miss. Oh, a couple of fingers wide in there. Between being an outstanding shot, taking that shot out and picking up a couple. And now Warburton using the tiebreaker to full effect if he can get another shot in here that's four and that will help his differential because he's already been beaten by Goldsbury in the first match of this pool and he does he gets it in for two gives him four points and he takes the second set and the match seven three seven three We'll have another match for you shortly, but let's have a look first of all at some uh, highlights of this particular match between Lee Warburton and Fletch Christian.
We're about to watch the last match of this particular pool in the Super Singles 1-8 to eight year players. It's getting near the completion of its competition. We'll soon know the top four and bottom four. And uh, making his way, he hopes, to the top four is Sean Goldsworthy. Uh, Goldsbury, uh, so he's playing against Fletcher Christian. So Sean beat Lee Warburton in his first match this morning. Warburton has since gone on to beat Fletcher Christian. And now Goldsbury, who's had a break, he's had lunch, he's been marking, and now he set to play against uh, Fletcher Christian in this final match of this pool. Differential comes into play, as we've seen. Uh, even though a player has won an end, and still has one to play, tries to get another shot on there to help in the equation uh, to uh, determine the top four, bottom four in the in this contest. $1,200 to the winner, by the way. And Fletch Christian from Takaro has just come off the mat, basically, straight into his next game. So he needs to win this. to have any chance of getting through to the next stage. If uh, Christian was to win, then that would have all three players with one victory each. And so then that uh, differential comes into the situation. Sitting in the background there with the big silver fern. We'll come back to that. One of the players from... The Kapiti Centre, who's running and running. been involved in this competition as well. That's a very good bowl. Nice start by Sean Goldsbury. So it's Adam Batty there just having a slug of a drink. I'm sure it's non-alcoholic. Knowing Adam, uh, Rapini alongside him. So Fletch goes down in his Takaro Tui. It's a great shirt, isn't it? We're seeing such a change, haven't we, over the last few years uh, in club uniforms. Uh, it's almost a contest to see who gets the best and brightest or most unique design. And I'm just looking at Lee Warburton's there. The marker, he's holding up the one shot with um, Goldsbury having the white marker. And here we see uh, Takaro Tui, so clearly a reference to two parts of the Tui, one being the year right on the sleeve and the other being the iconic bird. So Takaro Tui's Fletch Christian and that club there is, is one of the most enthusiastic clubs and s most successful clubs too. They'll be all putting their heads in their hands at that uh, attempted run shot from Fletch Christian. They know he can do better than that. He's having a chat to his opponent, Sean Goldsborough, Goldsbury, and they wander down after the completion of the first end of the first set, and it's a single to Goldsbury. And a welcome if you've just joined us to this. That's the Super Singles, Year 1-8, to eight, being played at the Nainai Bowling Club in the Hutt Valley. It could have been played outside. The weather's delightful here. This competition started way back as they had uh, elimination or centre competitions to determine one representative from each centre. The Manawatu winner was uh, the main instigator of this, Fletch Christian, who's playing there from on the mat now, Takaro Tui. And against him, Sean Goldsbury. Goldsbury, I'll get it right, I've talked about him all day, and now thinking of a singer from way back, Bobby Goldsboro, maybe, uh, who did that dreadful song, didn't he, called Honey. Oh, 
a super hit, but one that I have to had to turn off every time I heard it. Uh, Sean Goldsbury from Takapuna, representing uh, North Shore. Here we go. Christian trying to sit on that or beat that shot bowl of Goldsbury. So three bowl singles, as you notice. Six ends per set, two sets, a tiebreaker of one end, one power play per set. You can uh, nominate a kill. Oh, and that's what we might be getting soon here from the Takaro Tui man. Fletch Christian down two. So nominating the kill means that the end is replayed, but if it's a normal kill, then the jack is spotted on the two meter mark. Here we go. Ah, too wide. Come on. Doesn't like it. And Sharon Sims will probably get Fletcher aside and say, uh, look, you know that run shot you played on the second end of that first set against Sean Goldsbury and you had that little run shot and you you just didn't stay steady uh, you know just you know have a look at this <laughs> Sharon Sims is probably saying John you don't know what you're talking about but she's a great one for spotting that sort of fault in a person's play Goldsbury now, looking to make it three. Two beautiful bowls there. One just about on the jack, one behind. And now he puts one down there to possibly negate the... Uh, have I got two on the tee? Kill. Have I got two on the tee? I think Can he's still do? got two if he was yep. to kill this. Forehand drive and taking his feet across to the left-hand side of the mat, you'll notice. Here he goes. Likes it. He likes it. Ooh, he takes one out. So, dropping one is better than dropping two. Was having a close look anyway. That's a measure, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. One end, I'll go the other. He's got. <laughs> Neither player's got a, a measure, but fortunately the marker has. Not his duty, of course, to supply the measure, but he's happy to do so. He needed it a couple of times, particularly in his uh, tiebreaker against Goldsbury earlier on. So a long measure here for two shots. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Yep. That is two. Oh, well worth a measure. Two ends gone. It's 3-0 to Goldsbury. Looking to win this match and uh, become the top qualifier from this pool. Sweet. Hey, I'll play mine as well, right? So you will play mine as well, mate. Both now? Yeah. Both, yeah. Both players deciding to use their power play on this third end. Interesting, the mat's way back and 
Christian last time put it there, or previous time going this direction, put it way back and had two bowls quite a way short. But this time it's Goldsbury with the mat placement and he's decided to see if he can upset Christian even further by putting it way back there. So at the end of this match we'll, um, well maybe not instantly, but certainly we'll have the results of all the other matches and, and who's qualified basically, who's qualified for the top four and bottom four. So we've got a cup competition and a plate competition. He's in the zone. This is Goldsbury who's played National League football and New Zealand volleyball. He's a senior Gisborne East Coast uh, representative, even though he's only a second year player. Picked up a bronze medal in the mixed pairs at the Nationals. Plays for three clubs in various areas, but he's uh, already the junior singles champion for North Harbour and Bay of Plenty. So here we go. Fletcher Christian, two down at the moment. Much better bowl from him. Stay inside the circle. That's better. Fall in. Decision time. 3 0 down. Power play for both players on this end. I just want to see where that jack's going up. I smack it, mate. Run shots haven't been all that effective in this match. But when he's gone down to the head, he will see that even just a fraction of movement of the jack would just cart it back to his black. And I think the run shot's on the go again. He certainly he's got the back bowl. So if it does kill... better line he might oh oh gee that could have taken all three out but it doesn't so he remains at two down and with the use of the power play here by Goldsbury he now moves to seven to nil Goldsbury and Warburton just talking about what might have happened, what shot they might have played. So the way uh, it was situated down there, in fact it's still active down there with the position on the head previously. And you could just see that a little bit of movement of the jack would have popped it back to Popped it back to um, Fletcher's bowl, but he opted for the weighted shot. So a good start again by Goldsbury, who seems to have this particular 
first set in the bag, having played his power play, and so too is Christian, so he's got nothing left. It's a favourable edge there for a toucher and shot. That's more like it, Fletch. In there with a couple of touches. Does anyone have a spray chalk? Pointed this, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> Not far off carting the jack back. Still two to Christian. Last ball coming up. Here we go. Just a wee inside edge will do it for you. Whoa. Well, a good two anyway. Yep. That is a two to Christian. He gets on the board. But trails by seven to two. Playing the last end of this first set. Or is it? No, second to last end. Right, let's see if you can recapture that sort of draw power. Fletch started off with a hummer. Three on this end, three on the next, and you've won it. But as we keep saying, we've seen you've seen very few threes. Yeah, the other way then. A bit hard to get three inside that one. Oh, he's going to try though. Oh, a nice ball. You guys should be able to work out. You should be able to work out the plate semis now, eh? 
Is it clear who's got the plate semi? Semis are decided, can you? Trouble when you're also an organiser of an event and playing. So while that ball was delivered, Fletch was away down by the results board asking someone to do a bit of work on it. Now he comes back and refocuses. No, I haven't done the cards, mate. Christian holding yeah, shot but would both. prefer to be holding two or three to give him a chance of levelling or taking this first set out. Leaves the mat way up short does Fletcher Christian having picked up a single on that penultimate end. He trials by seven to three. Bowls get kicked up. This is the shortest they've played so far. He's hoping that he can close the gap significantly when it comes to points differential. I think if uh, Fletch doesn't go any further in the competition, he'll come in and give us some comments or commentary. Must be lunchtime as their cameras start whizzing all over the place. Their <laughs> operator quite hungry. No, you're okay, Jack? Good. That would have been handy, Fletch. Nudging the jack back there, you would have been feeling quite good. Try it this time with the next bowl. Just cart the jack back. Give yourself three. Lose it 7-6, but grinning to yourself and saying, oh, I've got a chance here. How far behind the uh, bowl is the jack, mate? Your bowl. No, how far behind the, the red bowl is the jack? Thank you. Yep, you can see the jack and the shot. Here we go. Last bowl of this first set for Fletch Christian of Takaro. Yeah. Wanting to yeah. pull the jack back. Yeah. He might just do it. He might just do it and give himself three. He has. That's a beauty. He can't win the set, but he can certainly help his differential.
planning for this to be a toucher. He's still got the chalk on it from the last one. And a three there to Fletcher Christian. Can you go through the cards from the last round? And Sean Goldsbury wins the first set 7-6. <laughs> Fletcher Christian at the moment is over by the board. He's looking at results. He's organising stuff. The draw and Goldsbury waits because he understands what's going on. That his opponent is also the match committee chairman for this. <laughs> I think really his tactic is to make Sean Goldsbury relax and say, oh, well, he's not really concentrating on the game. He's got other work to do, so I can get up and win this. Uh, he's out of the play. Uh, and in the meantime, Fletcher's thinking, Sean's probably relaxing. <laughs> I'm going to get up and smack him now. So Christian is back into the action. And I'm sure that he'll already have identified the fact that um, it's very difficult to run a tournament and play in it. So delegation's a story. Any of you who uh, run tournaments at your clubs and uh, and also play in them understand that you're constantly distracted. And unless you've got really good team working with you who are willing to take on the role of on-the-day uh, results coordinator and so on, then it just almost becomes impossible. So all the other games have finished and it's just uh, the completion of this one which will determine the players or finalise really because quite a lot of those positions are pretty much sorted to sort out which players, which four go into the top four to play for the cup and the main prize of $1,200 and uh, those that go into the plate competition. Goldsbury with a power play on the first end. And making it count so far. Gosh, uh, that's... He's potentially finishing with a six on the first end. He's going to run into those three bowls that are all together. It's a lovely target if you're on form and if your mind's absolutely clear of other stuff. Here he goes. He's getting something. That took one out, but still remains two down. And so Goldsbury starts with two. Using his power play, that gives him four. 
And it's a great start to the second set for Sean Goldsbury as he looks in a strong position to be the winner of this particular pool. Matt right back on the two metre mark. He seems to be quite comfortable with this, or he, although he's moved the mat around quite a bit. We've had a couple of short ends as well. Forehand, good line, good length as well. Oh, that's a very good first bowl again by Goldsbury. Anything inside that circle is uh, really a top-notch bowl. Asking a fair bit of the ball to come in from quite that far out. It is a wider hand. Ooh, be wary of this man when it comes to the finals show great fighting qualities to get up and beat Lee Warburton in his first match. Just going to cut under, not a bad effort. But still two down. Yeah, it's a good ball. He hasn't fattened the target up at all. And so Fletcher really needs to play a similar bowl as to what he planned last time. Now he's going to have a go. Whoops. Oh, he took it too. Oh, very good. Good selection, Fletch. And all sorts of trouble then. And with his drives or run shots not really working so well for him. He pulls out a good one. Gets a very good result. Grabs the mat. Takes it up short. Let's see, has he just been foxing a bit? <laughs> no. That's good though. That's a better first bowl than his previous uh, effort coming this way. He was short and then the jack moved backwards and uh, if he'd had that sort of bowl in with his first it would have been very handy for him. So he's got the two metre covered here.
just going to duck under. So Fletch is just a, a third year bowler, I think. Brandon, is he? Yep, third year bowler. Oh, looks so. The, uh, it's pretty good. A wee bit more movement of the jack would have been lovely for him. He might have carted it back for two. And uh, and Goldsbury is a second year bowler. So we've got two really new bowlers. But players have already made their mark on the national bowl scene, with Goldsbury in particular having uh, scored some very good victories. So it's a measure. Slightly towards the north side, but I'm not sure. The rest of the rinks here at the Nine Eye Bowling Club in the Hutt Valley are vacant. Those players are taking a good break to have their lunch <laughs> and relax before fun. they participate in the rest of the competition. Those that go through to the top four will be a bit more anxious than the others because the top prize for the winner is $1,200. The top prize for the plate winner is $400. Every day for a couple of hours. Yeah. But Sharon Sims helping me out. So who? Sharon Sims. Oh yeah. yeah that's a good coach down there. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. Chance to push up his own and make sure of it. Or if he's got it already, draw another. No. You go for a measure first if you like. But yours is flat, so it's probably favourite, but That's the end of the third end of the second set. This final match in the qualifying, basically, for uh, top four or top eight. It's the super singles. Three bowl singles. Here we go. A measure, and it is a white number that goes up, which means it's gone to Sean Goldsbury, who moves to a 5-1 lead. Closer than that to me, but that's what tapes for in it. So the situation with this particular group is that um, Goldsbury beat Lee Warburton, who's the marker for this game, and then Warburton went on to beat Christian. And now, so both Warburton and Goldsbury have one win each. Goldsbury is now playing Christian to try and top this group. He's made a good start, winning the first by seven to six. He's used his power play early in this second set, in which he scored a, a two to give him a four. At the moment, he leads by five to one.
pretty much an identical green Lee, to his first shot, ball, mate? but Lee, his uh, shot, weight bro? correction was a bit over what's holding, mate? Emphasized as the marker is called in Thank to you. check and see who's got shot, and it is Fletch Christian. Just avoid that short bowl of oh, Goldsbury's nice. and uh oh. Right. Yeah, not the job. I need to go around you. Should have been faulty wide. Who says bowls isn't energetic? All the walking these players do, it's probably the same as playing a round of golf. Well, nine holes anyway. Gotta have his shot firmly in his mind when he goes on the mat. He's been down and had a look. De <laughs> determined what. Uh, <laughs> so he's concentrating, that's for sure. You kick the opposition's ball like that. Um, it's a matter, really, of while, he's, while he's holding the shot, he's also considering what damage uh, Fletch can do with, with his last, which he has in his hand now. Right, Christian really needs to nail this one. Needs to get the shot, or better still, two out of this. Oh, I'm going to Come on. Sits that shot bowl and not his own. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, well, it didn't turn out too bad. He was one down anyway and remains one down. So Goldsbury goes to 6 1 oh, after four ends. So Christian surely plays his power play now. Or, I don't know, he can play it on the last. It doesn't matter, but at least playing it now would get him in, back into the game. Is he? Or has he? No, he hasn't, has he? No. We'll just go and see. He's away over, dealing to the board again and the <laughs> results and stuff, so. Six one it is. Oh, first bowl pressure again, very good.
be on a similar line and a good position there, not too close, but second shot. Playing with a great deal of confidence. First one was right on the jack, moved it slightly. Second one probably gives him second shot. Now he just goes slightly over to cover the two. I'll nominate a kill, mate. Nominate a kill? Yeah. So he's nominated the kill here, which means that the end will be replayed. It, Jack doesn't get spotted, so even though Goldsbury has the uh, back bowl, it won't matter. Oh, anything could have happened, but didn't. And it's one or maybe two I'll come back to Sean Goldsbury. That's played the fifth end. We're moving on to the final end. Because there can't be a tiebreaker out of this final end so now. I ran the tournament, mate, so I can take a few. <laughs> Just one it was. No, two. That's a two. They've gone up to eight. Yep, so two there. 8-1 is the score. Into the final end. It's the final end of this competition prior to the playoffs for the top four and to the next four. So the top eight continue here with the winners of the winner of the cup division taking $1,200 and then significant prize money after that as well. And then the winner of the plate takes the $400 down to $100 for fourth placing. First bowl of this last end. Players all crowded around the big screen to see what the draw might be. Brendan from Bowls New Zealand, who's here as part of a two-man team from Bowls New Zealand, operating our live streaming coverage today, which really, as I've mentioned a lot of times, has gone from strength to strength. You can see the cameras lined along the side there, cameras at each end, um, players wearing microphone, markers wearing microphones, great graphics, uh, meaning... You know, what you see in the top left-hand corner there, the, the score ticks and uh, sponsors, credits and so on, it's, um, it's really impressive. So from, this is not one of the Bowls New Zealand organised events, but uh, as always, they get in behind such events and help assist with uh, clubs or centres that want to cover live streaming or anything like that, give them advice and assistance everywhere so Bowls New Zealand really has stepped up remarkably over the last four or five years on, and have given the bowling Finish. sport a huge Finish. improvement in its image Finish. it's attractive now to all ages it's lost that sadly I think inaccurate uh, description of being just for old people and quite boring and everyone wears whites um, to what you see right now and if you have watched any of the coverage from Australia recently you'll see you know that it's a majority of players are younger people here we go holding a couple already on this final end Sean Goldsbury now just going up to the two meter mark and plonking one in pretty close there so he's got all bases covered as he leads by eight to one he won the first set seven six 
This is the final bowl of the qualifying area of the Super Singles in the short form bowls here at the 9A Bowling Club. It's one at least there to Sean Goldsbury. He wins the match by 9 to 1, taking the first set 7 6, the second by 9 to 1. And so it is Sean Goldsbury who wins this pool, having beaten both of his opponents, Lee Warburton, who's been the marker for this game, and Fletch Christian. We'll have a few highlights of this, and then we'll be back with coverage of the top eight competition, uh, the plate final, and also the uh, bowl, the uh, cup uh, semis and finals. So more bowls to come here, but at the moment it's Sean Goldsbury who's grinning. Okay. Uh, right, so we've got the... So we've got plate ready to go. Yeah, I just need what we. Uh, what do we normally do with that? Who, anyone run any tournaments yeah, before? Four, I haven't. Five after four ones. In terms of ranks.
We're at the pointy end of the competition here at the Nainai Bowling Club in the Hutt Valley. It's uh, into final stages of the Super Singles. Years one to eight players have, uh, if you've just joined us, these We've players have ball, won their centre area eliminations. They've got to the you grand have. final stage, qualifying yesterday, where they played six matches and then another six today. So they uh, have battled their way through to a situation where they're now playing for the money. And... We see this particular match is with uh, the Cup semi-final, which features Rodney Downs of the Papua Nui Club in Canterbury, and his opponent is Brent Hawken of Cambridge Central. So the man who's uh, marking is uh, a man we had a look at just a few moments ago, Sean Goldsbury, who won two games in his pool. That is, he beat Lee Warburton and he beat Fletch Christian. But the differential and ends uh, and ends one counted against him, so he just missed out on qualifying for the top eight. So it's been a cutthroat sort of competition. So here we have the draw so Brent Hawken uh, against Rodney Downs that's the match we're watching at the moment and it's uh, Hawken I think who's got a couple of shots out of that uh, Michael State of Nongataha and uh, Adam Blucher of Te Atatu. Um Adam was a bit concerned that he hadn't qualified but he has he's made it into the top four so they're playing for the major prize money and in the second four we've got Evan Jones from Fitzroy in Taranaki against Mitch Cook of Brighton and uh, Steve Rickman of Silverstream and Doug Coombs of South Otago Town and Country. So that's the plate f competition. So those games that we'll be looking at is this particular semi-final here, the final of the plate, and then the final of this club uh, cup competition. So in fact it was Downs who got the two shots in that first end. So a good start for Rodney Downs. They do have uh, a power play available to them, uh, one in each set. Rodney Downs from the Papua Nui Club. He sends down the first bowl. This is Brent Hawken, who comes from a pretty impressive uh, bowls family, actually. His father, Jeff, uh, won a national title with Morris Symes and the Peers some years back. And, uh, and in fact, in this summer, I recall seeing the Hawken family. So uh, Dad Jeff, uh, Brent, and another brother, I think, uh, were part of a four which got to the last uh, eight at the or well, last 16 at the Taranaki fours so a very good uh, bowling family another brother is uh, Dave Hood Hawken who uh, has played for Wilton and currently plays out of Ramati also a handy bowler and he was here marking for his brother a bit earlier on in fact, I, I said to Brent, oh, I saw your brother here, and he said, which one? I've got quite a few of them. <laughs> so here we see he's bowling now. He's using Taylor Red lines. Sean, that last bowl, Jack Level. Rodney Downs. Bowl and a half light. Size 3 yeah. XGs. He's... Uh, from Papua Nui, he's a third year player, Hawken is a fourth year player, so this is Downs who's won the Canterbury Junior singles, he won the club singles beating Terry Stewart in the final, Stewart had won the event a few times and he's a part of the Canterbury development team, so if you get into that situation where you're part of the Canterbury development team you're a handy bowler. He's holding shot at the moment and is two up on the board. Hawken has won a couple of junior centre titles out of Cambridge Central so on the Waikato region. He was runner-up in the Open Club singles, um, where he said he was given a bit of a lesson by Taylor Horn in the final.
So both players are a bit on edge here. They know it's, there's a fair bit at stake and they know that family and uh, friends are watching and hoping that they'll do well. Notice how far the light has moved across the screen. If you watched the early games this morning, the sunlight coming through the windows had only just reached the centre line. And now it's uh, moved right across almost to the centre line on the other green. Well, that's an exaggeration, but it's moved across quite a way. Hawken looking to just sneak it around that short bowl of downs and settle it in for the shot. And he does that nicely just inside the, the rings. Still downs, holding shot. Pretty quickly into his action. Uses a lifter. Obviously he's had a bit of trouble with that left knee. He's got it strapped. Last bowl of the third end. Downs leading by three to nil. Hawken wasn't far away on well, the second bowl. Might be even closer this time. Is closer this time. That's a top-notch bowl under pressure. Three nil down on the board and one down on the head. And to come in with uh, a very good toucher with his last bowl. Gives him a single. He's on the board. Nice ball. Got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We both played. We had three good ones. There is it. Just had to sneak around that short bowl. It's almost that, that it was an inviting gap for a bowl. They tend to like going through those little gaps. It was a, enough room for a bowl to sneak through, but he took a bit of the jack as well. Give him the shot. persevering with that forehand which seems to be steadier of the two hands from what we've seen here today he gets enough contact with his already shot bowl to bring it in Ah, 
One in a measure. A bit of finger measuring done by Sean Goldsbury. And uh, Downs is no the, none the wiser, really. He knows he's one down. That could be two. Changes his hand. It's a better prospect for him down this hand now. And he just draws it off. So, very good response from Rodney Downs, Papa Nui. These players have done very well against uh, tough competition to get this far, make it through to the top four. Well, this might be two here now for him. He's going to run it out. Not quite. So just one it is, one's enough, it keeps you in front, four to one the score at the moment after four ends of this first semi-final. Players have the advantage of one power play per set, set is six ends. As with any game of bowls, uh, getting something close with the first bowl is really important in this three bowl singles. Nice ball, mate. Those players have, both players have done that. A couple of bowls through. Yeah, Zephyr. nipping under the jack which would have been handy for him to cart that along a wee way at the moment though Hawken, Brent Hawken from Cambridge Central holds the shot, he's down by 4-1 to one. this is the penultimate end neither have played their or used their power play Make it two here. This would be make it an interesting first set if Hawk can get, get up and grab another shot. And then they'll both be using power plays. Not bad. Jack movement's good. Back his way. Yes, he has. So he's grabbed two. And so they move into the final end of this first set with Downs leading by four shots to two. Uh, to three.
power plays. Double power play? Yeah. Oh, it's only it's still only six ends, isn't it? Hey. Yeah. We've done five ends, so six is compulsory for yeah. both power plays. Yeah. So double power play. Final end of the first set, the semi-final in the cup competition. Super singles being played at 9i. Double power play. Whoever grabs the shot, and it's just one shot needed, will win this first set. First bowl is important. Really important as Brent Hawken delivers a very impressive first bowl, just almost just sitting on the outside of the circle. Great line. He's a bit annoyed that he didn't quite get on it, but sometimes that's not a big advantage because you've got someone like Downs who's pretty handy with a run shot. So here he comes now. Looks a bit more weighted. Is he going to snare the jack and take it back? Ooh, touch her anyway, and he has got the shot. Moves to the back end. He'll quite enjoy the line that he's taken. In the area. Oh, if he takes the jack, that's a great shot too. Oh, he has too. So both players have moved the jack. This is a very impressive final end of this first set. A couple of bowls low, that bowl, eh? So from the mat, Downs will see the shot low. bowl. Slightly obscured by Hawkins first, but certainly a playable shot. He's got his own to move up if he needs to, if he can reach it. He's going to reach. He's going to reach. He might not need his own. He might just draw it dead. Oh, what a superb bowl. That's great stuff from Rodney Downs. So Hawkins will find that he has to change his hand again, play the forehand this time. Oh, and it's singles, but this is your last bowl. You've only had two so far. Last end. This to give himself a chance of winning the first set. Great track. Downs is interested and can see. Oh, he might even sit the shot. He might. Oh, uh, unlucky for, <laughs> for Hawk and then. That was a really good effort. And Downs won't need to play his last. He has the shot there at the moment. He already has one up on the board. And what a great head this has been. Really excellent bowls. <laughs> so Rodney Downs goes down and just lifts his bowl, brings it back down to this end where the bowls are. Brent Hawkins places the jack on the permanent spot. But it's the other end they'll be playing to. <laughs> And it is the first set going the way of Rodney Downs. He picked up a single on the last, but that was a power play for him, so he got two. And it's a 6-3 victory in the first set. Some really good play. Wasn't this a great end? This shot here from Downs was a killer. Just sneaking around, had the perfect weight. And then Hawken, with his last, 
If he hadn't uh, collected his own bowl on the way through, he probably would have sat the shot. So some excellent bowls from these two. Brent Hawken, a fourth-year player. And Rodney Downs, a third-year player. Couple of good opening bowls there. There were quite a few players. Uh, I think um, a number of players had the same amount of wins, um, but it did come down to differential ends and points differential before they could determine the eight who qualified. So it's been a great competition. That's a rare short bowl in this game. Now it's come from Downs, who won the first set. You can see his look of annoyance on his face, standing in the background, pretending not to be interested in what's happening in front of him, rather glancing at the other side, but not really looking at anything there. <laughs> for another few centimetres, eh? That would have been all right. His bowl's back here. Movement of the jack would have favoured him. Must be quite close because uh, Goldsbury is finger measuring down there. Both bowls look as though they are cutting the line, but he shows us the black lollipop, so that means uh, Downs has it. Oh, he might not now, though. Ah. Yeah, so he turned the measure bowl of Hawken in for shot. Hawken with the last bowl of the first end. A little bit of a bonus here for him. might have overcooked it, has he? Just a bit overweighted. But he does get the shot, so Brent Hawkins starts with a single. Thank one. you for that. You're one with a bit of help. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cut across real late, eh? Again, we're seeing pretty good bowls first up from this pair. You don't get much better than that.
Hawken with his second. Takes him down to the two metre mark. So not a wasted bowl at all if he if he was looking to draw or build on his one shot. It's still a handy bowl back there, particularly with the accuracy we've seen from Rodney Downs. Lovely correction here from Downs. It's a handy bowl there too. A hawk and holding shot. If um, Down plays the backhand as he's played so well, he's uh, cut out that. I mean, his weight needs to be perfect. He could sit on his own, of course, and that'd give him shot. Or he could sit on the shot bowl. He could sit on the jack, and he's quite capable of dead drawing this. So it gets down to the mat now and has a look up. Reaffirming the shot that he had decided on. Does it look the same now, I wonder? Fingers widespread on the base underneath the bowl. Here he goes. Not much messing around. He seems to have good touch with weight. He's got good weight again, hasn't he? Is it going to come in? It's going to fall just short, agonisingly short, agonisingly short for Rodney Downs. And so it is a shot there to Hawken. Second and two ends. It was a lovely line, wasn't it? It was a lovely line. It was coming in nine. He's got the mat out about, I don't know, four and a bit metres maybe. This is my song. This is the song that I chose. All right. Oh, and again, look, we're seeing it time after time now, aren't we? These two are being very consistent with the first bowl. Just try to rest this out. Get that line right. Sit on the shot bowl or take the jack. Oh, he might just nab the jack here. Oh, oh, wow, what a finish. What a finish to that bowl. That really looked to be just undercutting the jack, but when it stopped, it fell in. Almost did a wee, did get a wee turn at the end here. Let's have a look at it again. Stopping, stopping, stopping there, and then <laughs> almost did a U-turn on itself. Came back and sprung the jack a wee way. So a shot here. Hawken playing the other hand now. Moved to his forehand. He can also move the jack or sit on the shot bowl. Oh, look at this for accuracy. Not sure. Oh, oh, and I think that might show us that he has the shot. He gets a toucher out of it. They both touching, mate. Sean Goldsbury has a look. It's close. It's very close. And he's... Oh, no, it's got the, still the black. So Rodney Downs still holds the shot. Look at that. It's almost touching. <laughs> so it jammed up there as he, he just flicked that jack, turned it over. And came back on itself. Oh, great. Some really good bowls. Wow. Downs now with his second. Don't 
Doesn't want to touch it if he's got the shot. I thought he might have just gone for the two metre because I don't think Hawken will be shy if it needs a weighted shot. But you know, just play that again. Gosh, let's see if he can. There he goes. He's motoring. We just opted to go for one that's slightly weighted. There we go. You see how jammed that is. Now already Goldsbury has said that uh, Downs has the shot, so it's touching. <laughs> looks to be touching the jack, and I wouldn't be surprised if Hawkins is about a cigarette paper away from it. Let's see what are they doing here. Well, I already hit it once. And didn't they'll stand over the top of it and look down and they'll see, yes, Hawken concedes that his shot was only second shot. So this uh, intriguing match between Brent Hawken of Cambridge Central and Rodney Downs of Papua Nui Christchurch continues to be exactly that. Intriguing, enthralling. 2-1 after three ends. Here we go. See this again. Uh, you would have, on any given day, a, a, a fraction of a centimetre more towards the centre of the jack, and he would have taken that and possibly grabbed two, but that was a nigh-on perfect bowl. In fact, those three bowls were absolutely outstanding, and there was nothing short. Anything that was weighted was in a good position, and here's Do Downs with his first, and once again, a handy first bowl. Inside the circles... So this bowl, the bowls we've seen, um, that one even of downs, you could only fit two other bowls inside that, between that and the jack, uh, really good stuff. This is a cup semi-final. Good bowl again. Could have been perfect. Just see that there was that opportunity for Hawken to sit that shot bowl or get a little inside edge. Possibly went closer to snaring the jack. So Downs trying to compound Hawkins' problem here. No, it's not really a problem. Oh, he doesn't. He falls short. As I said earlier, a rare short bowl in this clash of these two under five year bowlers. So both juniors in the old sense, year one to five. Nice. Of it. <laughs> well, from the moment it left his hand, you knew that he'd made a, a correction. Flicks the ball up behind his opponent. Thinks about his next shot. Downs look, looks like he might change hands and uh, play the uh, forehand for him. Maybe looking to, as they sometimes say, play their, your opponent's shot. So take it out of his uh, plans. Oh no, that's not what he wanted. So now, what does Hawken look at here? He's he's probably probably got second and third shots, but certainly second shot. So he'll just look to draw this. He hasn't been far away. Won the first set. Mitch Cook. Looks to be wider this time. Yeah, I think he was possibly trying to just rest that uh, shot bowl out and grab the single. So we've got six bowls down there. That means they've all played their three bowls each. 
and we'll have a black lollipop go up and that can lets us know that it's Rodney Downs who's levelled up at two all. I'll go power play. Use and yours. This is the first stage of these players battling it out for twelve hundred dollars first prize money. Power play being used by Hawken. This becomes a crucial end. The interesting thing was that in the last end, Downs bowled two really short bowls. Hawken won't worry about that. It's not in his line. He's been playing the other hand quite well anyway, so... Here he goes. Looking to once again put a good bowl in first up. Doesn't look overly convinced about this. Might have gone a bit wide on that hand. Right, pressure on here. Downs with a couple. Hawkins looks interested. It's holding its line. It's holding its line. Oh, 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 oh. that's the shot. That's worth at the moment. Two points to him. He's using the power play. your weight like Rodney not good enough important bowl here for Hawken already holding the shot and having two because he's using his power play the inside of that whoa oh 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 will that be two or not let's have a look and see yeah it looks like it doesn't it two equals four great use of the power play by Brent Hawken but of course Rodney Downs still has his power play and if he gets two, that will give him a draw, which will be enough to take him through to the final. So Rodney Downs now. His last two ends have been, for him, quite scratchy. He hasn't nailed that first bowl that he was. Hawken, one close to the jack, will make Downs' life really difficult. Here it comes. Pretty good bowl, only a metre and a half over, just outside the circles. Just found his, in the last couple of ends, has found his weight has deserted him. Both with an ideal green.
Looks to be heading to a good home here from Hawken. Just hold it inside the circles. Shot bowl there from him. This is where, if uh, bowlers are getting any mental coaching at all, this is where it comes into play. Change of hands. Not a bad idea, I think, because he just has found it difficult down that uh, other hand. Could sit the bowl, could sit the jack, could just grab the shot. Has he? Has he done enough? <laughs> I don't know. What's Paul, uh, Sean Goldsbury say? Uh, he says measure. I can see that from here. <laughs> Hawken oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> has the family smile on his face. Now the steps back. An opportunity. Maybe change his hand. Will he? Yeah, I think so. Not a bad call, really, because he's got... And when we see the head again, he's got uh, a bowl just behind the jack. On the left hand side as or the right hand side as he'll be looking at it. And therefore he's got the opportunity. You can see he's got two there if it oh we don't think this is gonna make it unless he sits the jack the shot. No. Well not his best shot. He's played some great ones under pressure, particularly on that last end. But still Downs has to make sure he gets two out of this. To win the match. If he draws at six all, that means he takes the game. So he has to play the forehand. He plays to play onto his own shot, which could be the shot, and might not be. And has to stay for that, or he sits out the second shot of uh, Hawken. Let's see what that head looks like as it comes down. Sit on that second shot of Hawken. That'll be the way to go. The closest purple bowl. Sit that out. And he'll grab the match, but he hasn't. And so we go to a tiebreaker in this first semi-final of the Super Singles. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't really matter whether it's uh, Hawken won it or not because there's uh, points differential don't come into this. It's uh, whoever wins the end. Oh. So Downs picks up a single conceded by Hawken. One equals two, and it's 6 4 final score in that second set. So now we move into tiebreaker. It's just a one end tiebreaker. I shake hands yeah. and that say, This has been a good match so far. <laughs> I hope I'm putting the mat again, down again a bit later on, but if I'm not, it's been a really good match. Tiebreaker here in the first of our semi finals, yeah. or second of our semi finals, in fact, because we know that Michael State has won the other semi-final and is through to the last two of the cup and he will play the winner of this game and in the plate final it's Mitch Cook against Steve Rickman and we'll be seeing that plate final straight after this. This might be the most important bowl of this end. This first one, will it be close enough to rattle the opposition? Looks to be wide on that hand for uh, Hawken. Very wide. Rodney Downs needs to return to his magic control of weight. That'll do him. Right. 
How far is the jack off the bowl? Maybe a bit more. It's under a bowl. Oh, not a mile away either, so he's going to be in a good place for his third. So the two metre is covered. Now Downs has the shot, so he has the advantage. He needs to now consider his next option. It's probably to be certainly not short. Yeah. Second shot and not close to the shot, so no target really. But what does he do now? Play with a bit of weight onto the shot bowl, will push the jack back to his other. See what his target is now. Here he goes there. See where his purple bowl is, where the two metre is. If he can hit that shot bowl and move the jack back, it'll come back to him. He can't outdraw this. He's got to play with a bit of weight and he's got to be accurate. And he hasn't managed it. And so the tiebreaker has been won by Rodney Downs of Papua Nui Outdoor in Canterbury. That was a classic match. Some really outstanding bowls from a third-year player and a fourth-year player. Brent Hawken of Cambridge Central getting through uh, to the final, to the semi-finals, uh, but going down on a tiebreaker to Rodney Downs of Papua Nui. A few highlights, and then we'll be back with the plate final between Mitch Cook and Steve Rickman. When I asked how far it was, you'd say a lot more. <laughs>
Welcome back to the Nine Eye Bowling Club and this final of the plate competition in this Super Singles Year 1 to 8 championship which we've had here and it's been absolutely fantastic to watch. Ah, I think I'm using the wrong headset. I'll swap you over. I wondered why I couldn't hear myself and uh, and that's you know quite a blessing to most people that they can't hear me but anyway um, we're using two microphones today and the reason is that we've got Fletch Christian in who I've talked about a wee bit during the competition we saw him play a couple of games and unfortunately for him he uh, he lost those two games but in fact he probably did it deliberately because he's always wanted to be a commentator and it enables him to come in and, um, and chat about this so Fletch, Fletch well, welcome to the broadcast it's uh, good to have you here and I think you'll be uh, sleeping well tonight won't you after all the effort of sort of having this organized and going around the country with uh, competitions and ending up here sort of running over to the scoreboard while you're playing and things like that <laughs> yeah no it's, a, it's been a good weekend I mean there's been a lot of bowls um, you know we played for about 12 hours yesterday um, and yeah I, I mean we we're all the boys this morning were feeling it a bit yeah. yeah it's, a, it's tough trying to organise and play, isn't it? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think men can multitask, I think. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, the, the, I mean, yeah, the thing is, when you're letting a bowl go, that should be all going through, all that's going through your mind, the rest of it. Um, I, I don't know, you can sort of stick it in the background, I reckon. I'm not looking at any excuses for not going any further really oh you, you went far enough oh look i just You'd wanted be happy to go deep, with that. that was all yeah um, i mean it's some quality play out there you, yeah you, you yeah, would have uh, i was hoping for that yeah and what you've managed with this competition is to highlight the fact that there are a lot of players between the years one and eight who are outstanding bowlers and we've seen it here with bowlers who are into their second year that they're they're playing to an extraordinarily high standard yeah yeah no i well, I mean, there's no excuses in here, though, is there? I mean, you're in carpet, you've got no breeze, um, you know, the light's good. So, really, I mean, if you're going to bowl well, it's, it's somewhere like here, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the bright, bright yellow bowls, they belong to uh, Steve Rickman from Silverstream. He's picking up his bowl and then getting ready to put the mat down because this has the, been the completion of the first end of this plate final. It's between Steve Rickman of Silverstream who's uh, just moving to the mat now. You can see the Silverstream logo on the back of his shirt. He's also, incidentally, a member here at Nine Eye, and but uh, Silverstream is his club. He, he uses this great facility, uh, you know, when it's not suitable to be playing outdoors at Silverstream. And uh, his opponent over putting up the uh, scores up on the board is Mitch Cook from Brighton. That's uh, Brighton in Otago. And... Uh, Mitch Cook is in his sixth year, and uh, Rickman, whose yellow bowl is on its way to start the second set, is in his third year. So a couple of uh, promising players from those areas, and that's not a bad starter, is it? That first bowl is so important in any game, but particularly three bowl singles. Well, yeah, well, any, any game of singles, really, but yeah, especially the one and a three, three bowl tie break, too. Um, but that then brings up the question of, you know, do you take the mat and back yourself or do you want wait for the last bowl? Mm. And I think the jury's out on that one for the people I've spoken to. Well, there's been a lot of talk, hasn't there? It was interesting, you know, watching you and uh, and your two opponents today, Lee Warburton and uh, Sean Goldsbury. Um, a lot of talk during the game. It's been a friendly yet fierce competition. <laughs> Yeah, well, look, the great thing is, is I've met 23 other bowlers now yeah. that I wouldn't have met. And, um, you know, that's that's one of the, the beauties of the game, isn't it? And you don't meet many people who will call undesirable in this game either. No, so. no. so, yes, Fletch Christian joining me in this uh, commentary. The plate final. Uh, Mitch Cook struggled a wee bit with that first bowl. If you found playing that ditch hand it's slightly wider yeah I mean I, I struggle a little bit with um, shadows uh, I don't know why um, my brain just doesn't seem to calculate that well but you certainly got to take your green out yep. there 
Yeah. Um, yeah if you don't, and you cross, you're gone. Good correction. So Mitch Cook from Brighton, which is uh, I had much delight in saying to him, I I played there with Grant Nisbet at in the Nationals when they were in uh, Otago. I don't know, four years ago was it? And we played our, our singles. What was it? Our peer. We played our peers, I think, down there. We did. We played our peers at the Brighton Club, and we met the president and his wife and uh, a lot of members there. We had a great time. Uh, but my overriding memory, apart from the friendliness, was that it was one of those days in which it just never stopped raining, and we played right through it, and we were playing through puddles, it seemed. And, you know, it was just fantastic because I had excuses. You know, <laughs> you need excuses. So, um, so Mitch Cook is in his sixth year. He's holding shot at the moment and watches as his opponent has a run at those. Obviously trying to hit his own and punch the shot bowl out or kill the, kill the end. So he's won the Otago Junior Singles title um, earlier in his career. Uh, he was uh, part of the Otago development team, Mitch Cook, and has had um, one appearance with the uh, the senior team. So that indicates that he's got plenty of potential or plenty of ability. One of your top supporters marking today. Uh, uh, Araya um, has actually stepped in to help out being the event controller. Yep. Um, I sort of, yeah, I needed him really. I was getting a bit busy out there. <laughs> well, he's a good mate of Adam Batty who played in the competition. In fact, Araya also played in the uh, preliminary rounds, didn't he, at the, uh, in the Kapiti Yeah, those, those two go to a lot of tournaments together. Yeah. Yeah, nice opening bowl from Mitch Cook. So if you've just joined us, it's, uh, this competition, which is uh, Super Singles Year 1 to 8 players, um, it's what we call the short form of bowls. It's three bowl singles. We're playing two sets, six ends. Um, matches can be determined by a one-end tiebreaker. Uh, one power play per set, not just per game, so one power play per set, and it's been interesting how this has been used. The uh, jack is always on the same spot, but they can move the mat out as far as they like within the uh, rules regarding distance. Here's another good ball coming in from Mitch Cook. So you've had good reaction, have you, with the format, Fletch? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I tried to make something <coughs> that was interesting and fast uh, and also just reduce the number of bowls so that it potentially uh, there'd be less driving, but <laughs> that doesn't seem to be the case, really. That's um, a top shot. But no, no, it's a good fun format. And, you know, one of the... Well, I sort of did it for two reasons, really. One is that um, there's not really a pathway for junior players... Uh, who win their champ champ singles or their centre open singles. But the other reason is that, um, you know, I sort of see clubs, I mean, some clubs are growing, it's great, but I see other clubs that are dwindling. Mm. Um, I mean, now in Thai Happy, you don't have a bowling club, and so bowls is going to be dead there, and it probably won't come back. And a lot of the people that you sort of talk to and say, well, come and play bowls, they go, no, nah, it's all day, we haven't got time. Mm. Um, you know, and I've got family, I've got a wife, I've got work on the weekends. And so I sort of thought if we could develop a game that lasted about a couple of hours, and one round of this is about two hours. Yep. So you play two games and mark one, and you could run a tournament like this over six weeks at your club. Yep. And it might just be a way of getting you know new people into bowls. Um, singles might be a little bit hard, so we're working on a, a pairs format as well, so that maybe a long bowler could play with a bowler. Um, but yeah, that's really just those two reasons, and seems to have been accepted pretty well by the players. Just have a look at this. Uh, it wasn't much of a target there for Rickman. As I said, he uh, he plays here at the uh, 9 -O Club and was able to scorch those two balls out of the shot, grab the single for himself. He now leads by 2-1 to one after three ends. And, um, and speaking of juniors, I must, uh, it gives me an opportunity to plug um, an event that you've 
played in, I think, um, Fletch at the Ramati Bowling Club on the 19th and 20th of August. We've got a junior 242 tournament there, you know, any combination. Um, last year we had a waiting list for it, and uh, all those who played last year will be getting a reminder about this one, but certainly if you're at all interested, and you can, um, particularly in the southern part of the North Island, I suppose, because that makes it easier for uh, travel, but... Uh, Ramati Bowling Club at Outlook.com or if you know me you can PM me, there's no problem with that, you'll find me so uh, even though I'm no longer the president there Fletch, I, okay. I handed over the reins yesterday at our annual general meeting. Alright, who's the president now? Uh, Heather Simpson has moved in so okay. be firm control Ok <laughs> Oh well, yep. excellent club. Yep. And she's, uh, interestingly that we talk about juniors um, on our committee for next year uh, there are uh, five juniors five junior players Absolutely. have gone on into the management role so and they're really keen to develop their bowls of course and don't want administration duties to uh, interfere with that but they're, they're keen and so that's really outstanding I think um, and it gives people like me who would like to play a bit more bowls <laughs> a bit of time too Absolutely. so that's um, 19th and 20th of August at the Ramadi Bowling Club a junior 242 and uh, Ramati Bowling Club at Outlook.com Great place to play too. Yeah, I've seen you there a few times. How long um, were you president there? Four years. Four. Yeah. Tw that's, that's a twice as long as I wanted to be. On. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, think <laughs> I didn't feel as though I'd, um, you know, n not put in an effort. <laughs> so. so Rickman now leading 2-1. We're playing the fourth end of this final of the plate. And the prize money, it's $400 for the winner and 300 for the runner-up, 200 and 100 for those, uh, or was it, are they playing a third no, and fourth? third and fourth, actually, we, we all agreed just to split, just split the prize that, money. Yeah, so 150 each. Um, yeah. yeah, some of them need to be driving back. Yep, and, yep. It's just one of the little things that we learnt this year. Yeah. There was a few things that we did wrong that you couldn't really know was going to be wrong. Well. Um, but you did when you did it and found out. It's seldom you start perfectly, yeah. eh? This is a good track here from Rickman, the bright yellow bowls. If he moves the jack, he's in a handy position with those not being short back there. That's two, possibly three shots here for Rickman with that last bowl of his. That's virtually the set. Yeah. Power plays to go. Mitch Cook from Brighton. Looking to salvage this. Might be just a bit narrow on this. So no one's taken a power play yet? No. Okay, all right. Automatic power play. Yeah, now, yeah. So Mitch is going to need, need all three, eh? Three. Three. Three for six. No, it is. He did get a three on this end too, Steve Rickman. So he moves to five. Five, one, two ends to go. So a power play here from Mitch Cook, you would think. And uh, in that, he would just need a couple to tie it up. What do we got? Any power play? No indication yet? Uh, it's automatic. Uh, oh, no. So, no, no. Sorry, this no. is the fifth end. This is it? only the fifth end, yeah. Yeah. Hit on myself. Yeah. So they're both playing without the power play, power play yet. So that'll come up in the next end, the final end of the first set. 5-1 Rickman leads. It was interesting. When you mark the first game, so you're coming into the second game and the guy you're playing has obviously just played. It was a really good tactic when... Uh, I forgot who I was, I was playing, but I came in from marking, so I stepped to the mat. He's just bowled a game. Yeah. He called the power play immediately, um, thinking that you know he had the best chance of winning the first first end, which is true. Yeah. So it was good thinking.
So that light's become a bit awkward there, hasn't it, I think? Yeah, a little bit, especially with yellow bowls. <laughs> that, yeah. Well, Steve said, you know, um, I've been told I'm silly having yellow bowls because if, unless you do like he's done right there, put one on the jack, he said you can stay stand out if yeah. you're uh, not accurate. Yeah, you don't want to bowl a wrong bias, it's one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's using uh, Redline SR4s there. Or size 4, I mean, SRs. Uh, and nice weight. Second shot. Yeah, the sun's getting him right in the eye. Not concerned, not bothering to wear a cap. Good concentration. That's the one. One. <coughs> Can't look. Can't look. Hmm. Smooth delivery from Mitch Cook. Good track too. Oh, he's going to nail this, isn't he? Yeah, that's a, yeah, ball, that's a beaut ball. That saved a real uphill battle. Yep. So now with the power play to be used on this final end, it's Rickman leaving, leading by 5-2. to two. So most of the players that have got through to this uh, stage, how many games would they have played? How many games did they play, and uh, how many would they have won to get through to qualifying year? Oh, um, they played six games yesterday, was it? Or yes, it were eight yesterday. We played eight. six in um, section play, yep. two in post section, and <clears throat> yeah, another uh, four post section games today. Yeah. Um, I look off the top of my head. Um, I can't really tell you how many. Yeah. I mean, no one's won all their games, put it that way. Oh, right. And there's been a lot of people, you know, if you're sort of playing 25 up singles, you'd yeah. expect to yeah, yeah, yeah. see, you know, some unbeaten guys at the top and a lot of people down the bottom. But this, this format just means that, um, oh, 13 games, I've just been told by yeah. Brendan. Yeah. Um, yeah, th this format, you sort of got to play a lot of games. It's a bit like pool versus snooker. Yeah. So you play a lot of games and the cream should rise to the top. Yep. Well, that's a bit of cream that's there, handy. isn't it? No. <coughs> From Brighton and Otago, Mitch Cook looking to dislodge this. He did it perfectly with his last bowl going the other way. Not far off it there, gosh. And, and Rickman will be aware of that. So where does he put this one? Change his hand and cover those couple of bowls. They're both using the power play. But Cook needs to get at least two. This is handy, I think. Yep. If you can get round that, that's really good. No, that's a top spot. Yep. However, um, I'd say Cook holds second shot with that one out to the right. Well, now he's going to. Uh, yeah. Doesn't slice it, he'd be right. Yeah. Sit on the shot. Rest that out. Oh, he's going with a bit of weight this time. <laughs> he had the back bowl. He had the closest to the tee. That's his third and final bowl gone. And Rickman's not going to bother playing. He has the shot and therefore the first set. First set. So there we have the draw. Brent Hawken was beaten by Rodney Downs.
and uh, that went to a tiebreaker. Michael State beat Adam Blucher. So it's State and Downs through to the final. That'll be that'll be very exciting. Evan Jones uh, lost to Mitch Cook, and uh, we saw Rickman beat Doug Coombs of South Otago. So the plate final will, is uh, Cook against Rickman, and later we'll have the big final between Downs and Stace. Not a bad opener from Steve Rickman, just outside the circles. I was giving Sharon Sims a good plug before, mate, when I looked at you on the mat and I said, Sharon, I'll be saying, oh, no, um, what you should do this. Oh, no, you're going well here. Did she have much of an influence on you or did you not I, come under her coaching? I, I go to Sharon for delivery. I call them checkups. Yep, good. Um, sort of probably in, during the season, maybe <clears throat> every three months. Yep. And you walk away with something you've got to change, probably only one thing. Um, so you go away and practice it and come back and if... If you don't, um, you're probably not much point coming back. Yeah. You know, so um, no, her time's valuable, but no, no I haven't. Uh, I haven't met a better technical coach uh, in the three years I've been no. playing. Definitely. I don't think you'll want this one back. Yeah, it's interesting if he can swing the momentum in this set, going into a one-end tiebreaker. If you've got the momentum with you, um, more than more, more often than not, you take it, don't you? Yep. <laughs> Come on. So out of the Silverstream Club, Steve Rickman. Come on. In fact, with uh, Leighton Wilding, they reached the semi-finals of the Wellington Open 2-4-2s recently. So while he hasn't, uh, hasn't won anything of significance, uh, he's in a pretty strong club at Silverstream. And, you know, if you win a junior title or a title there, you're, you're uh, not a bad bowler. Yeah, the Wellington um, qualifying round had some brilliant players in it. I certainly wouldn't have wouldn't wanted to have run a book for that lot. No. That's two brilliant bowls there from Mitch Cook. Hey, dropping the first set 7-2. And Steve Rickman puts the scores up on the board down the other end. And concedes a two on the first end of this second set. When would you play your power play in this, this, set, this set, John? I, I, well, it's nice to be up by two, but, but I think I'd probably still wait until about end five. Okay. Yeah. But you've got to sort of see what happens, don't you? You want to have the... You want to well, he just bowled two really good yeah, balls. Yeah, yeah. So why, why, why? Yeah, you could. So, he, uh, you're right. And going the other way, he's played it so well. So he might just say, right, I, I bowled it so well going the other way. I'll use it now to double in my numbers. I noticed you left it till the last end, did you? In your uh, uh, last yeah, game, both yeah, times. I was trying to keep it up my sleeve. Yeah. No, good balls. That's pretty good. One down. So now I'd imagine that Cook will change his hand here because yeah, that's. Down. Down. <laughs> is, that, is the yellow ball level? Or is he going to? Is it level the yellow ball? Just finding no. out the position of the For jack both. in relation to the bowl. I don't know. He's going to stay on that backhand. Believes he can get in there. Just 
looking to go under his own and sit that yellow, but I would have thought the other hand, that's what I would have been thinking, oh, I can see that now, I can hit the, the yellow and, and or the jack, but I'm not up to this sort of standard, so it oh, just goes through my mind, you know. Here we go. Yeah, I mean, I, <coughs> I think you were right. Well, I mean, there's a different, whole lot of different roads to yeah. roam, aren't there? But yeah. He's got the tea covered now, anyway. So. He's going again on this hand. He likes it. He's played his first ball exceptionally well. Even if he just touches his own, he's uh, in for shot. Yeah, one roll. Yeah. Or oh, sit the shot. <laughs> oh, gee. Just making sure. Well, he's sitting flat. The other one's yeah, looks yeah. like it's on its end on the line. So you'd think that he's got shot as he goes back down. You'll see how hard he tries. Yeah, it? that's right. <laughs> I'm not going to bowl it. What's that? Not going to bowl it. Not going to bowl it. No. Uh, yeah, he's not going to try at all. There we are. So he believes he's got the shot. So Rickman. Bounces back from dropping a two on the first to pick up a single, question mark. We'll see if uh, Mitch Cook concedes it. Yeah, coward, sorry. <laughs> Might see the measure come out or not. Yep, it's gone. No measure. So we've had uh, two ends gone. That's 2-1 in favour of the man who dropped the first set by 7-2, Mitch Cook from Brighton. This is the plate final at Super Singles. One thing I have noticed in this tournament is the lack of, well, the, a lot of people just not bothering to measure. They just trust their eyes, mm. call it, get on with it. That logo, it looks like a cocktail with a slice of yeah. orange on the yeah, side, doesn't it? Looks like a martini, yeah, or yeah. Like yeah. Not a mile away either from Mitch Cook. Just a bit shorter than it appeared, so he'll be looking to change. Somewhat, there we go, perfect view, thank you guys. Just looking for that jack, he could see it, it'll be quite visible from the mat. This is where you really would like four balls. <laughs> mm -hmm. that three it is, and it makes it a very interesting and exciting competition. So he's holding two. He's not going to want to fatten it up, Rickman. is he? No, I just think he might <coughs> just push it. Oh no, he's going to draw another shot, I wonder whether he'd go deep so he's drawn a third that's not bad that's really impressive so options here now for cook are limited it's a matter of just refining his first two bowls he's got the jack which could
bring him bring it back here he could bring it back here he could sit in amongst those yellows and cut it down from three to two what does he do does he get the jack he's not far he's off trying. the jack just going to slide oh no he gets it oh he's done it again Pressure bowls from Mitch Cook and from a position of being three down with his last bowl, he snares the jack and grabs the shot. 3-1. Not much reward for three really outstanding bowls from Steve Rickman. And he'll look at that later and say, yeah, but they were three pretty good bowls. I had three shots, but I just needed one slightly over the jack, you know, for, for such a shot as that. Absolutely. Yep, no problem. Here it goes. Well, we've seen the shot. It was just such a perfect bowl from Mitch Cook, who's now going to use his power play. No, Rickman's using his power play. No, no, it is Cook. Yep. So this is the fourth end. narrow for that hand doesn't it yeah mind you you'll probably get a wee feather on the inside and settling <laughs> on the jack so he's undercooked his uh, green both times and he's using the power play yeah that's that's the trick you don't want to waste them when you've got the power play in your hand Rickman using the forehand jogs off after it this man from the silver stream club in the hut valley Right, oh, Mitch, you played a, played a pearler on the last end to get up and grab the shot. You have to do it again. This is your power play. Better green. Better green and pull the jack back to yourself and give yourself everything. Close. Oh, what a shot. What a saving shot from Mitch Cook. Having used his power play, there's still one bowl to come. But he's got the shot, which would give him two, and therefore a 5-1 lead. Here we see it again. A it's a bowl from play. Rickman, first of all, which settled in nicely for the shot to give him two. And then Cook had to use his third bowl, this one here. Had to make quite an adjustment on his green. As you can see, his two previous bowls away to the left, and he did so. Great weight. Settles, settles in for the shot. Right. So, Rickman. He's got his power play up his hand for the f next set if he needs to use it then, or will he prefer to wait till the end? Oh, we've had that. Ah, oh, we've had the shot. So I didn't see that. I see uh, one in the ditch, so we just missed that. So anyway, it's a shot to Mitch Cook, and that gives him two. Here we go. The run shot by Rickman was narrow. Play, parked itself in the ditch and we have the power play use 5 to 1 now playing the fifth end Rickman not using his power play yet so that's Cook so really needs to pile them on here doesn't he if he can get another couple then that's uh That'll really make it difficult for Rickman.
Just notice uh, when this bowl is played, the scoreboard down the far end says 5-3, uh, but it is in fact 5-1. As we see Mitch Cook looking to build on this end, so he has the shot, he's put the pressure on Rickman. Certainly is on my mind, yes. <laughs> Close to the two, two metre that is. Yeah, that was close. He had two options there, didn't he? he could either hit his own, own one up into the shot area or pick up the jack, and he just about took it clean. So Cook started playing bowls in his early 20s. He's a 60-year player now. That looks very narrow from where I see it. He doesn't want to nudge up uh, Rickman's bowl. <laughs> okay, one to go on this end, and it is Rickman who's using... No, he's not using his power play. He's got that next end. Well, he wasn't shy at the one bowl target No, before. no. But if he does, he'll want to nominate the kill because he doesn't own the tee, does he? He has nominated the kill. Great. Okay. Looking at the angle, if he hits it, it should kill. Well, or maybe, maybe not. He's got a good line around his own, hasn't he? So, look at that there. Yeah, that guy. Oh, oops. No. So it is one uh, one shot at least there to Cook. Yep. Just watching down the far end as they walk away from us. That's uh, one shot. Yep, certainly the yellow first, closest yellow is closer than the wing bowl of Cook's. So basically it's automatic power play from oh. Steve now. Yep. It's power play for me. Okay. And he needs all three. Otherwise, it's tiebreaker. It is. Then we get to see what happens if they uh, who wins the toss and what they do. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So six one is the score. We're playing the final end of the second set. It might be the final end of the match, but if it is, it means that Steve Rickman has picked up a three on the final end to double his points as he's using the power play to give him a 7-6 win. And all Mitch Cook wants to do is make it difficult for him to get three inside his first one. And that is going to be difficult to get three inside that. He really needs to move the jack a little bit now if he can. On that hand. Yeah, it looks a bit wide, doesn't it? And a bit too much on it. Mind you, the plan is he's well, thinking to himself, be, that's a two metre something. mark. I can take it back there, that's good. So at the moment, Mitch Cook can play quite defensively. He's got the shot. Oh, he might not have in a moment. He's going to knock himself out. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for the two metre off. there. We might have gone in the ditch, I think. He has. Wow. He'll be going back saying, what on earth did I do then? <laughs> cool game. Now, his big chance is to take the jack back but he's not up for that no and he's no. used his kill yep. so yep mm. I'm sure that's what um, Mitch was looking to do initially was to get to the two meter mark and he's done it this time I 
can't see a three there, can you? No, no. Oh, well, practice shot. to take out both of his opponent's bowls. <laughs> bang yeah, on to bang. Uh, yeah. Collision would have been good. Not a tie break, sure. Tough shot. Yeah, I mean, mathematically possible. Yeah, yeah. It gives away the single. And so the second set is won by Mitch Cook in this final of the plate. And we now move to a tiebreaker. <laughs> Is that my consolation prize if I lose? So Cook has the mat first up. So it was just a single on that, I think, and so seven. One, the final score in that second set. I'm just checking the board down there, which hasn't been accurate, but it is 7 1. So the score is Rickman winning the first 7 2, Cook the second 7 1. Now we have the tiebreaker. There's the first bowl into the shadows. Getting close to sorting out the winner of the plate in the super singles at 9 I. Cook's weight was the better of the two. Now just needs to bring his line on a wee bit. Hasn't really made that adjustment, I don't think. Ah, oh, two together. Cool. Okay, it's a tiebreaker, and you've got one bowl left for Rickman. It's a matter of weight adjustment to get the shot here. Much narrower line than what Cook uh, was using. Oh, look. Here we go. Here we go. Is that the winning shot That's tonight? <laughs> yeah. He's got the two metre covered. He's got the shot. And he can dominate a kill. Is that what he's done there or I'm not? not? sure. Just a flick of the arm, but maybe he's just asking him to get out of the road. You certainly go and have a go, so maybe that's what he has done. Nominated the kill, I don't know. Oh, it's not going to work whichever way it goes. And so without having to play his third bowl, Silver Stream's Steve Rickman has beaten Mitch Cook to win the plate championship here at 9 I in the Super Singles. Culmination of a great couple of weekends, a couple, great couple of days here and lots of weekends around the country as eliminations were held, centre representatives were uh, selected and we get down to this clash between these two in the plate final. Mitch Cook of Brighton defeated by Steve Rickman of Silverstream and Rickman wins the $400 first prize plus the title. Some highlights and then we will be back with the big final this afternoon between Michael State and whoever he's playing and I haven't got it at the moment. Who was it again? Rodney. Rodney Downs, of course.